What is up everybody? My name is Light, and welcome to a very different kind of video. I figured that since we recently finished building the village inside of this world, that I would bring you guys on an actual world tour and show you everything that I've built in this world up to this point. Now, if you can't tell, I'm in survival. I do want to make it clear that I did not build this in survival. That would be insane. I am a very creative person. I play in creative. I thought I would just go into survival for this video to kind of bring us down to scale and have to actually walk across everything that I've built. Because I feel like when you're in creative and you're just flying around, you really lose a sense of scale and it's very easy to just brush past everything. So in this video, I really want to take our time and show you guys a bit more of the detail that I put into all of these builds. We're already outside of the village at the furthest point that I've built in this world. I'm going to show you guys the guard tower that I built over here. I imagine that a guard lives here and watches over the bridge. Maybe uh, he's in here sleep. By the way, I did not do many of the interiors. Maybe he's sleeping in here on the floor, I guess, not in the bed. Uh, and he hears a commotion on the bridge, so he comes up here to check out uh, what's going on and that's pretty much all he does. I guess he he just sleeps on the floor in here, but that's okay It's a nice it's a nice house <laughs> uh, any, Anyway, I also built this flower shop that I'm actually really happy with I've been using a lot of these debt Did I have a flower in here? I must have a pot fell so whoops I'm very specific about the flowers that I put in here. Uh, I think this would look nice though. You can't put these in pots. What? Uh Shoot. Uh-oh. This is embarrassing. Okay. All right, it's fixed. You didn't see any of that at all. I'm really happy with the design of this little flower and dye shop that I built. I used some very odd blocks uh, in this garden out here, and I wanted to do that just because of how vibrant these new flowers are. I also have these cauldrons over here with flowers in pots and some dyed armor to indicate that people are harvesting the flowers and using them to dye all of this stuff different colors. Now we are coming up onto the bridge overlooking the village, and of course we have a beautiful sight of the lost castle perched over there on that cliff across the ocean. Now before we go across the bridge, I actually want to go into one of these guard towers and show you guys just a little bit of the view. And I noticed that this cool mountain is kind of perched up and very prominent from this point of view. I kind of envision building these paths further off in the future to go further out into the world. And in this world, I really want to play around with those point of views and perspectives. So I thought it might be cool to maybe one day add a castle or some kind of fortress up on top of that mountain. No matter where you are in this world, whenever you're walking anywhere, there's always something far off in the horizon or perched up on a cliff for you to really want to go check out and see. I think that would make the world really exciting to play in and explore, and I really just like adding stuff like that. So, uh, if you have any ideas for what I can add on that cliff, maybe, uh, let me know. And also, as I'm walking through the world, be sure to comment down below any ideas that you have on things to add in this world. I'm always down to listen to your guys' feedback and take in your ideas. Uh, before we end our journey across the bridge, let's go up onto this last guard tower and check out the view that we have. We can see the tavern that I built right there and the actual entrance to the village. And I just love how this bridge came out. As the sun sets, we're going to be able to see how these lampposts glow in the dark. We're also going to have to find a place to sleep. I actually usually have the daylight cycle turned off in this world because I'm always building time lapses. So it's really interesting to see how the difference in lighting affects everything. Before we go into the tavern, I'm going to show you guys this little campsite that I have out here with a cauldron burning over a fireplace and some more traveling carts to indicate that merchants have traveled into the kingdom, or the village I should say, and set up shop to sell all their goods and stuff before it gets too dark. Let's run into the tavern and I'll show you guys that building. Now first off, coming up here, I do have some stables over here for you to hitch your horse and stay in the tavern for a night before taking them back out in the morning and traveling elsewhere. Uh, but let's run in here real quick. I did finish the interior for this building. Uh, basically it's just a kitchen and some tables and seating and stuff. Oh, I did actually build a cool grandfather clock that I'm really happy with. Simple design, but uh, you know, it looks like a grandfather clock, so I thought that was pretty cool. Hopefully I did put beds in these rooms. I'm not sure if I did. Okay, good. And that was the first time I ever slept in this world, which is crazy. I've had this world for like over uh, two years almost, I think, at this point. I'm not sure. If you're interested in finding out for yourself, I guess go and find the first episode for our Kingdom series. Uh, I'm trying to think of where would be best to go first in this village. Um, that's the marketplace over there, but we'll check that out kind of last. I did actually pass over this fountain over here, so we're gonna run up here real quick. I have this little path encircling this little hill, which I think is really cozy. I really like the little walk that you have up to this fountain. And then once you get up here, we have an awesome view of the tavern 
a little bit of the marketplace, and of course we can still see the Lost Castle over there in the distance. I'm starting to realize just how big this village is. I've never really just walked around it in survival, so I don't know how long this video is going to be. I can tell it's going to be pretty long, so if you guys enjoy this video, uh, please let me know in the comments to let me know that you guys enjoy this kind of longer form content. I might do it in the future. When I built this village, I actually terraformed the entire island basically that this village is on, and I also made these really cool rivers. I think that they feel very natural, you know, they're very small and they feel a lot more like creeks, and not to mention all the vegetation that I I keep doing that. Not to mention all the vegetation that I have along the creeks in this world. I think it makes it feel very natural and I just like the vibe that it gives off, especially with this bamboo. As you can tell, I also have these custom trees that I built. I'm actually not going to go all the way down this path, it's just houses. Uh, and we'll see a lot of houses in this video. I'm just trying to keep it moving here. As we come up onto the kind of main street of the village, I built these banners that span across the road. I think it's uh, really cool, a really cool design. So uh, now we're gonna come down here to more of the farmlands that we have in the village. I made these lanterns using, what is this, a hopper? Yeah, that's a hopper. A uh, very interesting design, but I think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, it feels a little bit, you know, like farmy, I guess. Just a very simple lantern design. And I also have these small docks down here with these very miniature, uh, cute boats. I wanted this area because it's kind of lower income housing, or I shouldn't say that. I guess it's more just like farmers. They, <laughs> they live comfortably. This is my made up world. But uh, I do imagine that you know, they have a bit more of a cramped living situation, so all the houses are a little bit smaller. Let's keep walking through the farmland. Just uh, more houses to give all the farmers some homes to live in. A big aspect that I wanted to uh, emphasize when building this village was just how natural and like connected with nature I wanted it to be. And I think I did that really well with the uh, design of these greenhouses. We'll actually go in here and check them out. I don't have the interiors like fully decorated, but I have the uh, the greenhouse part that's important, you know, all of the uh, flowers and plants and stuff. And we have a little bit of a dome up here uh, to allow light to come into the room and photosynthesize. I don't know if that's a word. Photosynthesize all the plants. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. And we're going to keep circling around the village. I have another greenhouse there, but we're going to take the long route past this fountain that I built and go along this little uh, natural trail. And like I said earlier, I really wanted to play with perspective and point of views in this world. And I really like this area on this little natural trail because you can see the Kingdom of Calorum right over there across the sea. It, it makes the world feel very like lived in and I love that. We're gonna keep walking into the second greenhouse that I built. This one is a little bit more fancy. We have a lot more plants everywhere and I even have some of these uh, glowberry vines hanging from the ceiling. I'm not sure if these strings are necessary. I don't think they are. I think now you can just use shears to uh, keep vines from growing. So if these keep growing, I'll come back later and shear them up and fix them. I'm always working to uh, improve the world just a little bit. I'm gonna, I'll do that later actually. Just more uh, glass in the ceilings and stuff to allow light to, photo to photosynthesize all of the plants. I even have a ladder up here to come up and check out this little area. It's uh, very nice. I really like the um, dome that I built for this greenhouse. We're gonna keep walking past all of this stuff. Oh, and I should mention actually, back here I have a little bit of the hill carved out to reveal some cliffs, just some like exposed stone and cobble, and it's actually showing off some of these amethysts planted into the cliff, and I thought that was really cool, you know? And I also have some carts showing that people are mining the amethyst and collecting it, maybe to a bring it back to the market and sell it to villagers. I don't know. They can do whatever they want with it. Their choice. It's a free village. Walking across this bridge, we can see the other island that I transformed for this village because one island is never enough. We're gonna walk across this bridge where we have another awesome view of the lost castle. Oh, actually, uh, we're not gonna do that right now. We're, we're gonna do that soon. Stay tuned for the second island of the village. Let's keep walking across this other bridge that I built, past the other waterfall that I built, and uh, we're gonna look at these houses down here. All of these houses have decks on the back of them, and I wanted to do this because uh, they're built on a very steep ground, and I figured that since they're all kind of overlooking the Lost Castle, it would be pretty interesting to add decks to all of them. Not only so that you can like walk around them entirely like this, which is nice, but so that they all have a nice view of the Lost Castle. Uh, that is another entrance to the market. We'll go up there in just a second. This path just keeps on going past some more houses that I built, and eventually 
it meets up with the tavern back over here. And if you're wondering where this road goes, it goes back to the bridge. So let's walk back here and go into the market square down here again, just four houses. Check out as we enter the marketplace and turn around. See how I built this framing the lost castle? That is so cool. I just love the little details like this. It really adds a sense of scale to the world and it, it just makes the castle seem very prominent. You know, that looks so cool as you're walking out and it's just over there across the giant ocean. Here I have a little bit of a water well and I also have some fountains next to it to uh, make it easier for people to come by and maybe collect, use a cup to uh, collect a, a cup of water. And honestly the detail in this market is just like absurd. It would take me forever to show you guys every little stall and store that I have here. You know, it's basically just chairs and tables and uh, armor stands, barrels, other stuff to indicate that goods and services are being sold and exchanged here. Um, we have some more stalls wrapping around here. We have the town hall that I built in the finale of the uh, Let's Build a Village series. And uh, just a little bit of a secret, no interior. I might, I, I'll probably add one later, uh, but we have the important part down, you know. The decks out here are, <laughs> are decorated and that's really the important part because this is the spot that you want to come out to, to really check out the village. And this town hall has so many decks, like, surrounding almost all sides of it. Like, I, I just love this, uh, the views that the town hall offers. I am going to walk out to all of the decks and check them out. And you know what? I think in real time we're going to be adding a bed. What color bed do we want? Maybe magenta. Interiors can just really take me, like, a long time to do, so, uh... It's not, it's not really the most important part of the village, I think. We're back out of the town hall, and now we're looking straight ahead at the library, and I love this design. This might be one of my favorite buildings in the village. I used uh, this new chiseled bookcase block to indicate that books are being taken out of the shelves and people are using them to maybe bring them out here and read on the deck. This deck is the main reason that I love the library so much, because you have a, I guess it's a 180 degree view. Uh, spanning from the Lost Castle uh, right over there behind that tree uh, to the other half of the village and of course the Kingdom of Calorum way over there. So let's keep on walking back into the library and I will show you guys the uh, second floor up here. Oh wait, that is the less cooler second floor. Let me go up here to the central dome of the library. We have some enchanting tables set up here, and now I'll show you guys the last thing that we have up on this hill that I'm really happy with. And of course, it's this fountain. And what I really like about this fountain is the trellis design that I came up with using uh, spruce trapdoors, some campfires, and the new glowberry vines. These encircle the fountain way up here at the top of the hill in such a nice way. It just feels so cozy. I really love the uh, vibe that it gives off. All right, so I showed you guys this half of the marketplace. Let me walk all the way down here so that you get, you know, a uh, full idea of where this comes out to. This comes back out to the tavern again, and I'll show you guys the second half of the market, which is over here. We have some more of these hanging banners hanging down to, uh, you know, give something for your eye to catch as you're walking through all of the space. More of these uh, traveling carts, more stalls, and basically for decoration, I just went all out adding more armor stands and candles, pots, and even uh, sea pickles everywhere because they kind of look like cups or something. So, you know, let your imagination do the work and uh, I'll just keep placing pickles everywhere, I guess. Uh, now that that's all of the market, I really love how it came out. Hello, pig. Um, actually, let me show you guys this real quick. This is just a little, I don't know if you can call this a cul-de-sac. It's a, a part of the housing area that I wanted to feel like very confined. There are a lot of houses in this village and I just wanted it to feel like these houses are like almost built on top of each other. Let's walk back to this island, another bridge that we're crossing, and of course we have a great view of the castle and the kingdom. Let's start off with the top of the island. We have a little bit of a lighthouse and uh, just some normal houses over here. The uh, houses on this island are a little bit more upscale and uh, nicer than the houses over there. Oh my god. So I made them a little bit bigger. Let's keep walking. Here's a little bit of a different view of the lighthouse. And down this way, we have our warehouses and our docks area to show off that people are coming to the village and they're uh, shipping stuff, they're trading stuff, 
they're storing stuff. I guess that's what you do in a warehouse. Let's actually go up here. For this warehouse, I really wanted to uh, build a crane coming out of it, which I think turned out pretty cool. I love how I just like walked out the window. I really like uh, walking past this crane here. It's just so cool with it towering above you. It makes the docks feel so much more lively and stuff, but we're actually gonna come over here to the end of the docks and we're gonna use this boat down here to travel over to the Lost Castle. You can get a little bit of a better view of these ships as I sail past them. And I'm using the boat to travel to the Lost Castle, like I said earlier, to really make ourselves understand the distance that I used in this world between all of the builds. It makes the world feel uh, much more realistic because, you know, it takes time to get to places. We can't just fly over there or use an elytra. We have to sail. I have not built anywhere to dock at at the Lost Castle yet. I do plan to at some point though. There's a little bit of an opening down here in the mountain and I thought about doing something with that but I'm not entirely sure what yet. Let's uh, just dock right here. Honestly that took a little bit of time. We might we might just fly back. You know what? I ain't walking up all that. That's crazy. I will show you guys though uh, this really cool uh, creek that I built. I did this on the other side of the castle as well. I really love just like making natural rivers. I really do need to build a path to come up here. It would make a lot more sense because right now I just have the entrance of the lost castle kind of appearing out of nowhere at this bridge. But uh, it's still pretty cool, you know. I have the important stuff uh, all idealized and like built. I'm not going to show you guys the entire castle because again that would take forever. I'm really just going to walk in here to the main hall and show you guys this because I love the way that I furnished this. By the way, the entire castle is completed. That includes, of course, the exterior and the interior of the castle. I'm going to uh, walk up here and show you guys the full dining hall. And now we can walk up this really cool uh, spiral staircase that I built. Uh, I'm really happy with it because not only does it lead you up to this kind of second portion of the castle, but you can also use it to uh, come out here and go to the other towers or go across over there to the other side of the castle. But we're going to be going up here instead. We have a Ender Dragon head because that looks cool. We have some bookcases and banners, lecterns everywhere. And I actually designed this banner myself, which is pretty obvious, I guess, just because of the amount of detail I wanted to put in here. I kind of went with the vibe of like very warm colors with red and orange everywhere. And of course we have some more trimmed armor. This looks sick. Netherite armor with uh, I think redstone. We're actually gonna sleep real quick up here before leaving the Lost Castle and finally going to the Kingdom of Calorum. Let's go back into uh, creative just to make this a little bit easier. And I will show you guys actually since we're in creative now. Uh, it'll be a bit easier to fly around the castle pretty quickly. I'll show you guys uh, this out here. Goes to this little bridge. Goes into here. Oh, and of course, you know what this reminded me of? I need to show you guys the uh, big tower here, the Lost Castle. Um, with the Lost Castle, I really wanted to play with pathways and just the way that stairs intersected in and out of towers, which you can see uh, right here. This was kind of the test uh, for that design. And I took that even further with the tower way- I am opening so many doors. With the tower way over here at the back end of the castle grounds. Let's run over there real quick and you can already see the stairs wrapping around this tower as they go up, which I think is just so cool. I really love how this tower came out. There's a ladder that goes all the way up to the top. That's for boring people. Uh, but we are cool, so we're gonna go around this giant staircase wrapping around the tower. And I just love how this turned out. It is so cool. Uh, this door goes out to this little bridge, which goes back into this tower, which then meets up with the main castle hall. Like I said, this castle is just gigantic. It is so easy to get lost in here. Uh, but luckily you're with me, so we are not going to be getting lost because I built this place. I, I have to know. As the uh, staircase intersects into the tower, it gives you uh, more levels to explore and stuff. And I just have some stuff like paintings and lecterns and bookcases uh, decorating the interior of this place. And up here at the top, I have some more enchanting tables, banners, more ender dragon heads because they look so cool. 
Oh, and look at that. We have just like magically teleported back to the village. Wow, that was, I don't, I don't know what just happened. That was magical. I, I really don't know how that happened because I was in survival that whole time. Let's walk back through this village one more time and I'll show you guys the very first thing I ever built in this world, which was, of course, the Kingdom of Kalorum. A big thing that I want in this world is for everything to be connected via paths. And of course, I know we just flew over the ocean because the Lost Castle is not connected to really anything else. I am going to be extending paths and adding docks over there to make everything feel just a little bit more connected. But I think it's pretty good as it is right now because uh, we have the kingdom and the village connected and that's really the most important part. We're going to go and visit this giant farmhouse that we have in this larger area of farmland. And I kind of imagine that a rich farmer lives here, and that that is because, of course, they have a they have a working fireplace. Like, oh my gosh, I think this is one of the only buildings I put a fireplace inside. Usually, I just like add chimneys at the top, and they're fake fireplaces. But this has a real one, so that's how you know it is a fancy house. And I actually, I really do like the design that I used for this house. I think it's really interesting. Uh, the brick and the terracotta go really well with the spruce up here, as well as the deep slate bricks and stairs. I built this very soon after the deep dark update came out, or whatever it was called. The update that added all the deep slate, and I really loved playing around with those blocks. If you're a longtime fan, you would remember in the very first episode, I was talking about how I built this pumpkin patch so that we have a nice view to overlook the entire village, and what can I say? I mean, this just looks awesome. We have the close proximity of these pumpkins to put something in the foreground, and then in the background, just the village sprawling way across like everything you see. It really just goes to show how huge the village is because it, it takes up the whole screen, you know? I just really love how like densely compacted everything is in this world. It makes it feel really fun to explore. Let's keep walking past all of these custom trees I built. These trees, I have to admit, they look a little bit odd, but I really like them. I don't know, just like something about the difference in uh I think this is mangrove wood and the spruce stairs. It really makes them feel like they're kind of like gnarly old trees. I don't think I'll ever change them. I know I had talked about doing that at some point, but I, I think I'll keep them. We have, you know, these smaller kind of jungle slash spruce trees uh, to add some variety to them. So I think it still looks nice. As we're coming out of the village and entering this, and entering this uh, huge farmland area, we can see the castle of the kingdom of Calorum towering above us in the distance and this is like this is sick these views are what i started this world for and i am just like so proud of how it all came out i don't even have shaders on right now and i am like still just kind of in awe of like the scale of everything that i've built it really adds like to the grandeur of the castle by having this giant farmland right outside because it gives you this very wide open space yet your eyes are like obviously drawn to the castle in the distance. And as we're continuing walking through the farmland, you can see this giant river that I customized. I really care about just like detailing all of my builds. So like, if you're interested in stuff like that, consider watching my older videos. Uh, you might learn a thing or two, or you might not. I hope that you uh, enjoy the video either way. Now that we're done with that shameless plug, let's keep walking into the kingdom. And of course we have these giant walls surrounding pretty much the entire thing. I haven't been here since I like finished the village, I think. And it is really cool seeing the, first off, seeing the Lost Castle pop in and out of render distance. I love how it looks just like across the ocean, you know. And like I keep saying, it makes the world feel so much more realistic and lived in. As you first enter the Kingdom of Calorum, we have these horse stables for you to hit your horse at. Uh, this kingdom is massive, you know. It is hard to do a world tour in a world that is like so uh not difficult to navigate around but there's like so many different paths to take like i want to make sure that i show you guys everything so i'm just going to kind of run through this path real quick and all of these are houses so it's not really too much to show off like i said earlier if you want to see everything in a bit more detail download the world for yourself and uh check out whatever you want to check out now that we've taken that weird route i can show you guys this bakery that i built that i'm really happy with we have some cakes out here for people to chomp on you know i'm in survival and i i took food into survival because i thought i'd have to eat but i forgot i'm in peaceful so i i don't need like any of these carrots or the pumpkin pie but that is okay uh, anyways oh i did not decorate the interior not going to show you that we have the outdoor space out here uh built up with a huge chimney showing that people are cooking. I'm gonna keep walking down this way actually. We have a little bit of a pumpkin patch with some wheat and of course a small marketplace. Well, I don't know if I would call this small. 
a medium-sized marketplace out here, and I actually threw in some real villagers. They can stay in here. I, I have it so that they're kind of trapped in here and they can't move out, so I figured why not add some villagers just to uh, add some movement to the world. Let's check out the church that I built over here. This is a very interesting church design. I used uh, smooth sandstone and birch, and uh, I don't even know what this block is. I forget. I remember that when I was building the kingdom, I had built this giant tree, and I lost the recording for it. I was like so upset over that, but it was just a tree, you know? It's nothing too grand, I guess, but I, I was like pretty happy with the design of the tree, so yeah, let's get a green bed, and we're gonna sleep right under this tree oh this is so cozy look at all the look at all the particles like surrounding us and let's keep on walking through this little marketplace that i built every sand sells something different this guy apparently sells apples uh, if i remember right this guy sells yep armor and swords over here oh they're talking about something i don't know what they're doing something important this guy up here sells pots you know they all sell different things telescopes we're uh, walking past the little farm next to the bakery again. This road just goes back up to the bakery and it actually has a small little back entrance over here if you're curious and seeing uh, right down there. And now I am going to show you guys uh, these kind of outdoor ovens that I built. They're uh, for smelting bricks or stuff. Oh yeah, they are for smelting clay into bricks. I'm gonna get rid of those and go back into survival again. And this is a, a blacksmith, I believe. Yes, this is a blacksmith that I built. I thought this would be the perfect area for it. Or I guess this is actually more of a toolsmith or something. We have a blacksmith over there. You know what? I don't know what the difference is. This guy does armor and stuff. This guy does tools and swords and stuff. But the reason that I positioned these buildings here is because we actually have a giant mine over here and i imagine that this is why the kingdom was actually originally built here they found like a giant wealth of resources and stuff and they started mining here and they just realized how much wealth was here to use and eventually they used all of that stone and stuff to uh build the castle as well as the village and uh i do actually have some mines down here but download the world and explore it for yourself we're gonna go down to this other docks area that i have at the kingdom uh, this is for smaller boats, you know, people just maybe buying stuff or going out to explore. An aspect that I really liked about these docks that I built is this secret cove down here. And this actually goes out to a little secret dock over here with a little secret boat. I thought this was so cool. And it's like very hidden, but you can still see out into the sky when you come out of the cave right here. I, I really liked this. It was really uh, fun to build. Let's come back out of the docks and let's keep on walking. I have this nice little covey, cavey, watery area. I don't know. Here are the rocks, and if you're interested, this is where that secret cave came out to. I really, I, I really like this. It's a very uh, cute little area. We're done with this area now. Let's walk through the wall and over this bridge and just look at the amount of detail that I put into all the natural stuff surrounding uh, the land in this area. I really like how this came out, and I'm actually going to go back into creative to show you guys the bridge under here. And I really need to shear some of these vines and fix them, but uh, you get the point that I was going for. Everything is very overgrown and natural, and I just love how it came out. And actually, while I'm at it, I'll fly down here too and show you guys this nice little view that I just love so much. Let's jump back into survival and keep on walking through the kingdom. Now, over here, we just have some houses. Uh, and up here we have a giant tavern that also acts as kind of an inn for people that are traveling to the kingdom to come and stay at. And they're traveling here by use of these ships at another docks area. Now the difference about this docks area is that it is much larger. And as you can see, it has much larger ships as well. And we also have another lighthouse over here, which I really like the design of. I kind of built it so that it has a house like built on these pillars and uh, I really like it. And uh, let's walk out onto the docks and uh, just check out some of these ships that I built. All of these were uh, custom made, obviously. If you're actually interested in learning how to make a diagonal medieval ship kind of like this, check out the video that I released recently. Uh, diagonal ships can be difficult to build in Minecraft, like all diagonal things. If you're interested in using a tutorial, I released one on how to build that, so uh, check it out if you're interested. And we're gonna walk under the tavern. And actually, I'll walk in and show you guys what it looks like inside. Never mind. Do not have an interior, but I, I will show you guys the uh, exterior porch that I have. This just has uh, some more seating and chairs for people to sit at. I thought it was really nice, you know? And by the way, I built the tavern so that it's reaching over the path and there's this huge arch. You always want to think about 
how your buildings are composing the space around you, like in this area right now. This feels like a very, you know, kind of cozy, nestled area. You can't see much of the horizon. You're very, like, enclosed within all of the buildings. You can play with, like, the way that you uh, compose your blocks and everything to kind of frame other buildings. And you can see me doing that here with the lighthouse and the dock so that when you're walking, all of this space really opens up and it really gives you a feeling of just like exiting a, a, a space and entering a new one. Now that I'm done with my TED talk, let's uh, show you guys the uh, wine garden that I built. Wine garden? I don't, I don't know if that's what they're called. A wine field? I'm kind of blanking on the name. I, I've been talking for a long time and I'm not used to commentating for this long. Oh God, I have some, uh, you know, bushes with uh, berries hidden in them to indicate that uh, whoever lives here is coming out here and uh, harvesting the berries and turning them into wine, which I think is how wine is made, something like that. Let's keep walking through. Uh, oh yeah, I do want to show you guys a really compact uh, wheelbarrow design that I made using a grindstone, a composter, and uh, just some trap doors and gates. And I also have this little nice wheelbarrow design to maybe indicate that people are moving berries out of the uh, vine yard, out of the vine yard. That's what these are called. Let's keep on walking through here. And as you can tell, I did that same thing that I did with the tavern slash inn with the uh, winery. And let's actually sleep one more time. And we're gonna keep on walking past the winery. Finally, we are in the last section of the kingdom. So outside of the castle, I wanted to have the entire kind of front yard area uh, act as a gardens area. And I did that by having a little water spout out of the tower over here and turning into a pond, which then turns into a waterfall cascading down the hill over there. I also have a couple little huts down here in the garden, and this is for maybe a groundskeeper to upkeep the grounds outside of the castle and keep them looking pristine and nice. Also have some cute little shelters to uh, store whatever goods they need. And uh, of course, I guess this would act as the main entrance to the walls that completely encircle the kingdom. I will show you guys the view from this tower because I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you get a nice view of the castle over there. Let's go over here, and this building is a barracks place where soldiers train, okay? It, they've got like some targets to shoot at with bows and arrows, they've got some dummies to attack with their swords or whatever, and they've got uh, some armor stands for them to hang their armor up. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's finally go and check out the castle itself. But before I do that, I'll show you guys where this path goes to. It just goes back to those houses near the entrance of the kingdom. Go up this giant stairway that goes into the castle. Now, if you didn't notice, the castle has a pretty unique design. I'm using a lot of different blocks. Uh, of course, there is deep slate uh, bricks down at the base of each tower, but almost every tower is a different color. Since this kingdom is the kingdom of Calorum, which if you didn't know is Latin for the word color, I kind of had the idea for this kingdom of just making it very colorful. You can see that already with just like the blocks that I used for the roofs of all the buildings. Of course, I love how like from here you can only see red, but you saw it earlier and you'll see it as I continue walking through the rest of the kingdom. I guess coming over to this deck would probably be a good idea to overlook everything. Of course, all the roofs are red on this side, but I promise there are blue and purple roofs on that side of the kingdom. I have a bunch of towers over here and they're all connecting using these bridges and stuff. When I was designing the castle, I really didn't go in with too much of a plan. I just knew I wanted it to feel like, like very connected and a little convoluted. And unfortunately, I do not have the interiors done for the castle. Um, maybe eventually I'll come back and do that, but what I, I do want to do is walk up through this tower and just show you guys the way that I connected all of the towers together. I have these bridges going to this kind of central tower over here. You can go up this ladder to enter the main, or at least what I consider to be the main uh, tower of the castle, which is this gray one over here. I know I don't have the interiors done for this, but I really just love all of the facades that I made for this castle. I think it turned out pretty good for not really having an exact plan. And now that we've seen the castle, I am going to walk back across this deck so that I can enter the tops of the walls. And I want to show you guys one last view of our world. If you like this longer form content, uh, let me know because I would be interested in doing more stuff like this. Let's go up this last guard tower and this view is awesome. It really gives you almost a 360 degree view of everything that we've built in this world. We see the lost castle way over there on the distant edge of the horizon. And of course we have the village stretching across over here to this island and we can just sort of see 
all of the custom trees wrapping around to this kingdom. And everything just feels so interconnected, and I love this place so much. We do have one lone boat out there in the middle of the ocean. Eventually, I am going to be adding some more just to make this ocean feel more full and to make it feel like things are actually moving. I will be building in this world very soon again, so if you have any ideas for things to add, let me know in the comments. If you thought this world looked uh, kinda cool, you can download it for yourself. You can go and support me on Patreon. It is $5 to get access to the world download, but I feel that is fair. I really do not want people downloading my world for free and, you know, putting it off as their own work or stealing my design, so I feel like it is necessary to put the paywall. You can spectate and just look at everything I've built, play in creative and add your own builds, or you can uh, change it into survival like I've been doing for this entire video. You can play survival in this world, which I think would be pretty cool. You have some uh, materials that you can take from the kingdom and the village. I think that would be a really uh, cool immersive survival experience. Let me know what you thought about this style of video, and also leave a like if you enjoyed. After we add some more projects to this world, I will definitely be releasing the world for Download again with all of the updated content, and shortly after that I will be definitely doing another world tour. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe to stay updated for all of my future videos. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next video.